Welcome to Baking Wisdom. This is my latest series where I feature recipes from my newest cookbook of the same name. Now, there are recipes in this book that are easy, complicated, and sit in the middle. I'm not sure how you feel about chocolate souffle. Some people are petrified, others say bring it on, and that's the attitude I want from you today because we are going to master classic chocolate souffle. The first thing you want to do is get your souffle dishes ready. And what I need to do is butter the dishes and then coat the insides with flour. You know, the whole secret behind a delicious souffle recipe is getting that lift and rise. And if you simply grease your baking dish with a little bit of butter, or if you were using spray, well, that souffle would slide right down. So the sugar, in addition to adding a little sweetness and almost building a delicious crust, allows that souffle to climb and really rise up as it bakes. At the same time, while I'm doing this, I'm preheating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius. That way you've got that fast, instant heat to really coax that souffle to life. You're gonna see throughout this recipe, I'm gonna do this a lot because that's what we want our souffles to do. Now to coat the dishes with sugar, so just take a little bit of granulated sugar and pour it into a baking cup and then twirl it around as you let it tumble out into your next souffle dish. And then you wanna pop this onto a lined baking tray or in a roasting pan. That way you're taking them in and out of the oven all at once. If you were doing a savory souffle, like a cheese souffle, you would coat your ramekins with either breadcrumbs or with, in the case of a cheese souffle, grated Parmesan cheese could be nice. Put it back in my sugar bowl. No, I have to be careful because this sugar came in contact with butter. This is not the type of sugar I would use to add to a meringue whipping egg whites because fat's the enemy. So I would save this for another recipe. It's time now to make the base of the souffle. If you are making a cheese souffle, you make a foundation sauce, an actual bechamel that you add cheese to. If you're making a fruit souffle, you would make a pastry cream. That's your base. Add your fruit to it. At the end, what is common, you fold in whipped egg whites. When you're making a chocolate souffle, well, it's easy because chocolate is simply the base. But you do need to give some body to it. So I've got a little milk with a touch of sugar, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. And I'm gonna stir that together now to have it ready. This will be added to my melted chocolate. Whenever you're adding cornstarch to a liquid, you want to make sure that liquid is cold. The cornstarch doesn't actually dissolve in there, but if you were to add cornstarch dry to a hot liquid, you would instantly get lumps. I'll take this over to the stove where I'm going to melt my chocolate. Because I'm melting a combination of chocolate and butter together, I can melt it over direct heat, but definitely on low heat. I like to put my butter in the pan first, that way it kind of creates a barrier before I add my chocolate. You don't have to melt your butter before you add your chocolate. I'm using Couverture baking chocolate. I've got 150 grams or five ounces. You can sometimes buy it already in chip form, but don't confuse this with the chocolate chips you buy in the bag for your chocolate chip cookies, because that is designed to hold its shape in baking, where we want baking chocolate that melts into this beautiful souffle. If you're melting chocolate over direct heat, like I am here, you have to stir it and watch it carefully. Make sure it doesn't get too warm. That chocolate is nice and smooth and glossy. So now I can add my milk sugar cornstarch mixture. I'll add just a little at first. I'll give it a whisk. Now don't be surprised when you're adding cold milk to the warm chocolate, if you see the chocolate go grainy for a second, just keep whisking. And even if it doesn't seem perfectly smooth, once you fold in the egg whites, it will smooth right out. The one thing I don't want when you make this chocolate souffle is any moment of panic. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, turn the heat on very, very low. So you do want to keep this chocolate warm, not hot, but just on the lowest heat setting you have on your stove. That way, when you fold in the egg whites, it'll fold in easily. Well, the good news is you can get the foundations made ahead. 
take care of your pans, grease them and sugar them, have them on the tray. You can make your chocolate base and add the milk ahead of time, chill it, just rewarm it when it's time to actually whip the egg whites and get your souffles in the oven. Now it's time for the essence of the souffle, making a meringue to fold into that chocolate base. It takes a lot of egg whites, 10 egg whites. So that's 300 grams worth of egg whites. And a little tidbit of baking wisdom, egg whites store and freeze perfectly well. So if you're separating eggs for another recipe, maybe a pastry cream or creme brulee, save those egg whites. You can keep them in the fridge for a week, even two weeks, or freeze them. Just thaw them in the fridge overnight, but when you whip your egg whites, you want to whip them at room temperature. Egg whites at room temperature whip to a fuller volume. We want to give those egg whites every opportunity to be the best they can be. So that means adding a little bit of cream of tartar to the egg whites. This is acidic and that helps the proteins within the egg whites stretch to their fullest volume without collapsing. And that's a key behind a successful souffle. I've got my sugar measured and ready to add. I'll slowly start adding the sugar after the egg whites become foamy. Let's take a look at these egg whites. Now you've got three peaks in the whipping process that you use in the baking world. You've got soft peak, where when you lift the beaters, you get a bend. You've got medium peak, when you lift the beaters, the meringue has just a slight bend to it, and then stiff peak, where the meringue holds upright. Now you would think that for a souffle, you want a stiff peak, but you actually want a soft peak so that there's room for those souffles to grow as they bake inside the oven. So as I can see here, I have the meringue is still running off the beaters. 10 egg whites makes a lot of meringue, so it can take a few minutes, but just watch your mixer carefully. And here's another bit of baking wisdom for you. Did you know that when you're whipping egg whites, you don't have to whip them on high speed? Sure, it may take just a little longer, but if you whip your egg whites on one speed less than high, you can discern that line when you hit your soft peak perfectly. Oh, there's a nice soft peak. Got glossiness, but when you lift your beaters, you've got a nice curl to the meringue. It's got a little movement to it, and that's what we want. I'm going to hang on to my whip attachment. That is gonna come in handy. And now you want a big bowl. Even though I whipped my egg whites in a big bowl, you don't want to add the chocolate to the whites. We want to add the whites to the chocolate. So now, this has been holding warm. We'll transfer it to our folding bowl. Now I don't want to introduce the whites all at once to the chocolate. I want to lighten my base by essentially sacrificing a third of the egg whites. That will make the remaining two thirds easier to fold in because I'll have a lighter base. I want to use the whip attachment. It's a great way to lighten that base and get the egg whites mixed in there without deflating them too, too much. Then I can switch to a spatula for the next step. You will see the souffle batter become fluid as you're mixing it. So don't expect volume. This will be pourable by the end. Now I can add the remaining egg whites. If you've worked with folding in meringues before, you've probably been told, be very careful, be very gentle, which is true. But remember that time is the enemy. So while I want you to be gentle and fold from the bottom, pulling your base upwards, you also want to be relatively quick. If you take too much time, you risk letting those egg whites deflate. And when you no longer see streaks, you know you're done folding. Now I'm going to pour the batter into the souffle dishes. These only take 15 to 18 minutes to bake. As the souffles bake, you don't want to open the oven door until you hit at least the 15 minute mark. They only take 15 to 18 minutes. A souffle doesn't actually fully cook set all the way through. You want it to be a little soft and creamy in the center. You can tell when your souffles are done because outside of the obvious, they've all risen up, 
They'll be sort of matte and lose their shine on the top surface. Then it's time to eat. Make sure everyone is at the table. Great volume. It's a bit of a myth that you have to serve the souffles seconds from the oven. You've got about three minutes. Okay, that's not a lot of time, but at least you have three minutes. What I like to do is crack open the center, lift out a piece. I've got a salted butter caramel sauce. Pour in a little caramel into it. And you know this is a million degrees right now, so I'm gonna talk about some other things while I let this cool. Getting the perfect flat lift on a souffle is the magic. And it is a combination of the whipped egg whites, the level of folding. So even if it cracks on the top like mine did, guess what, it tastes exactly the same. I know you are going to feel so proud when you make this chocolate souffle recipe. Your guests are going to absolutely love it. And I can't wait until you join me again for another episode of Baking Wisdom. Okay, now I think the souffle has cooled. Mm.